Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, in this uh, uh, slideshow that you see here is the architecture of the IPDK Cadence Intra Offload software. And in this video, we are going to demo uh, IPDK Intra Offload solution. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, there are a few points that we would like to highlight. Uh, firstly, in this software solution, uh, there are no changes made or are required in any of the KTS core components. No changes needed in Calico CNI or in the CRI container D. All the images are off the shelf and have been downloaded from the open source and uh, deployed as is. Uh, the IPDK KTS Infra offload software itself is kept separate uh, with its own uh, repo on the IPDK.io and uh, commits are going into it continuously. Uh, to give a high level overview of uh, the solution, uh, Calico provides a means to plug in any external data plane. Uh, and we have used that mechanism uh, by writing a simple uh, configuration file. We plug in our uh, infra agent uh, that enables the CNI offload to the uh, IPU data plane. The agent, which can actually be split into uh, two parts, one in host as interface agent and another in uh, uh, the infrastructure as infra agent. Uh, this agent is the one which is responsible for initiating the transfers of all the configurations from the KTS to the IPU data plane. And it happens by a separate component called uh, Infra Manager here. Uh, with this split architecture, uh, the Infra Manager is actually the one which provisions the data plane and tracks the configurations being uh, applied in there. Uh, the transfer of all these uh, configurations happens over these uh, gRPC channel. Uh, we use gRPC channel because with TLS enabled, it provides the uh, integrity and security to the messages that are being sent from agent to manager and then from manager to the KTS runtime server. Now, uh, going back to KTS configurations that are applied by the user, uh, uh, the infra agent uh, registers what uh, is called as uh, KTS watchers. Uh, that agent, uh, this allows the agent to constantly look out for the CNI changes uh, that are happening related to resource provisioning. For example, whenever uh, C9 interfaces are uh, created or deleted, the agent handles that configuration and passes it on to be programmed on the hardware uh, pipeline. Um, another thing to highlight here is that uh, while the configuration information is flowing through, uh, a copy of these configuration is stored internally uh, by the infra manager in its state. Uh, that helps in maintaining a consistent state in case of uh, infra manager pod uh, restarting for any reason. By restarting to and attaching to the existing tools in that uh, storage, the infra manager reaches the same state where it left off last time. And because of this modular design and this uh, plugin nature of this architecture, uh, this solution can help with offloads in uh, private, uh, public, or even hybrid clouds. Uh, the flexibility also allows the solution to support both software and hardware data plane. In fact, uh, in this particular demo, we are going to use P4 DPDK target, uh, although the software and solution is actually targeted for IQ, where uh, data plane is completely in hardware and no host CPU cycles are consumed for the KTS networking part. So this demo is going to be uh, presented by uh, uh, our team. Uh, to keep the demo focused on the solution, we'll start with a setup where the machines is uh, already configured with all the prerequisite software, all the settings, drivers, everything have been loaded. Uh, we have also installed the Kubernetes, uh, Docker, Container D, Calico, uh, even the P4 OBS MSD. So all the required packages and third-party software are all pre-installed on the machine. Uh, setup has the uh, Kubernetes also running and waiting for pods to be instantiated. Uh, the P4 OBS daemons are also running, and the PA4 uh, runtime gRPC servers are also actively listening for any configuration that uh, will come through. Uh, the P4 pipeline has been built and downloaded on the platform and uh, waiting for packets to come in and get processed. Uh, so uh, as we'll see in the uh, demo, uh, among all the parts, there are uh, two uh, main parts uh, that belong to our solution, which is uh, having the infra agent infra manager. And um, uh, as I said uh, uh, before, these, uh, these are the two components through which the configuration flows from all the way uh, user to down into, into the data plane. And uh, uh, all those configurations include all the programming and forwarding rules uh, based upon IP address and MAC address. And all this flow happens under the hood with absolutely no involvement from the user. Uh, for the user, it's the usual way of deploying pods, the snooping of configurations, transferring that information into the data plane for the offload. All that uh, uh, magic happens under the covers with no complexity exposed to the user. 
uh, basically no additional steps are required from the user other than regular KTS uh, deployment. So it's uh, as simple as it has always been. And uh, uh, in this demo, we'll also at the end uh, run through some traffic and we'll see the data plane in action. So uh, let me pass it over uh, to my team to actually run the demo. Have the setup ready uh, with the uh, Kubernetes deployment already set up on the software's installed, whatever are required. And I have like four windows here. So in the first window, I will be creating the test box. In the second window, I will be showing you the list of the pods that are running. And in the third and the fourth windows, I will be showing the log messages of the infra manager and the DPD tape. So but let's see what are the pods that are currently running on the system. So you can see like so we have infra manager and the infra agent pod already deployed along with the other Kubernetes pods in the Calico pods. So now I am trying to create a new pod. It's a simple uh, test pod. So pod slash test pod one created. So we can see the pod we can, the container is getting created. And we can see the logs here. So I have, I have created a pod name test pod hyphen one. So if you see the logs here, we got an incoming add request for the test pod one on tap interface before tap underscore four. And this in entry is inserted into the DPDK pipeline. So inserting the entry into the CMA tables. So we got the entry inserted. And we should see that these entries are inserted in the DPDK from the DPDK log. So here we should see the same MAC address. Uh, that, uh, that that uh, and these are the logs for the entries that are inserted. So we can see the pod is created by now. So the pod is up and running. The same way, I will create one more test pod. So which we use for demo purposes for uh, the, the, the network operations. So I'm creating another pod, test pod 2.yml. So I created another pod, so I should be getting the entries again. So I have received uh, another request, incoming add request from the infra agent to the infra manager for the test pod 2. Uh, just a minute. So it is uh, so it is assigned an interface of before before tap underscore five, and the entries are inserted into the before pipeline, and we can see those entries in the pipeline in the DPDK log. So this is the these are the entries that are inserted for the first part, and these are the entries that are inserted for the second part, and we can see the parts are running. So the test pod one is running and test pod two is also running. CNI add a request from infra manager is uh, offloaded to DPDK pipeline. Uh, here we see that uh, rules are configured uh, for test pod zero and test pod one. Um, here we see that uh, test pod zero has got the IP address 192.168.0.6 uh, uh, and rules are configured such that any packet with this IP um, uh, uh, should be forwarded to port ID 4. And we also see that a second pod has been configured with IP address 192.168.0.7 and uh, any packet with this IP should be forwarded to uh, port ID 5. Uh, now let us ping from test pod 1 to test pod 2. Uh, I have started TCP dump at test pod 2. We see that ARP request and ARP reply packets have been uh, sent followed by ICMP echo request and uh, uh, echo reply packets. So here is a quick glance at the P4 program uh, used for the demo. This program offloads the functionality in QProxy component of Kubernetes to the DPDK pipeline. The program is compiled using the P4 DPDK and PNA compiler, and the resulting package is loaded into the DPDK pipeline. Like any other programmable pipeline, this P4 program uses various match action tables to program the forwarding rules. 
earlier in the video, we saw rules for two pods being programmed into the pipeline. This table here, IPv4 to port table, is the table where rules to forward and ARP request were added, depending on a match on the target protocol address in the ARP request packet. This table uh, maps it to the appropriate port to be forwarded and processed. Packets um, other than ARP requests are processed by the second table, MAC to port table, where we add rules to perform layer two forwarding of the packet based on destination. So this was a quick overview. This program implements several features. It is open source and can be accessed through ipdk.io GitHub repository. Thank you.